Estamos aquí desde Crypto Noticias con Charles Hoskinson, el ex creador de Cardano y también es el director de IOHQ. Uh, how are you, Charles? Very good. Hola. Uh, how was your experience with the conference? It was a great conference. We had a lot of fun. There were some great panels. There were some good presentations, and I was the guy who ended up standing between everybody and alcohol. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you some questions. Uh, you were a, uh, I, you were uh, working at Ethereum at first, and later uh, you dropped the, the project. I think when the DAO, the DAO. Uh, a little earlier than that. A little earlier. Okay. okay. We kind of had a philosophical discussion whether the project was going to be for profit or not for profit. And when they decided to be not for profit, I and here should treat that. And then later on, other people. Left as well. But kind later, but later you came back to work at Ethereum Classic. Yeah, yeah. When the DAO hack occurred, because I felt that regardless of where I was. There or not, I helped structure it here. And they raised $18 million on a particular social contract, and some people believe that immutability is part of that social contract. So I felt it was immoral and unfair to take that choice away from the So they needed the option to travel half the world now. And what it became clear to the Foundation was the way to support it in the classic, so it was morally necessary to come in, put the money down, and see if it was just going to be They were very successful. It's now running quite well. I'm working with Cardano before, 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 actually. I never thought I was going to do anything in Ethereum yeah. again. Okay. And actually, some of the guys who created the Ethereum Classic Client are right there. That's Alan Bergner and his team. Uh, and they came up from Argentina. And they did some great work. They created the Classic Scala. Uh, which I think at the moment, the only Scala Ethereum and Ethereum Classic Client and full client in existence. So uh, we learned a lot. It was a good experience. And now the PC team is quite strong and independent of Ethereum. And uh, talking about the Cardano, middle, like, it's it's established with, it works with a delegate, delegated group or... No, it has, it's not an EPOS account. Okay, it's completely EPOS. You added a delegate to the same option. EPOS is compulsory. So basically how EPOS works is you have a set of permanent delegates, 21 or 101, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's love. That's love leaders. And the people vote for that. Right? Whereas how our system works is you have distributions of data, and based on that you have a proportional chance of winning. You have okay. 30 percent. You have a 30 percent chance of winning. And that you get elected to lobby. And then you make a decision: do you show up or do you delegate that to somebody else? Okay. So you kind of have two stages. Whereas DPoS only has one. Party party. You have a voting for a group of people. And those people then control the system. And they run for however long that period is. Okay. Or until they lose confidence. In the yeah. Whereas our system, you just have efforts. You have elections. Got to break down the elections the are automatic. They're based on state. And then when people control the system, they can decide to show up, not show up, or delegate. And uh, it is a secure, uh, 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 I don't know, proof of work? Yeah, that was a very big open question. We didn't know in the beginning. So what we did is we first modeled the blockchain. We had this concept of a secure ledger, and we had these properties like common physics, chain growth, and chain quality. And we said, okay, that's what Bitcoin is trying to accomplish, and then we proved that Bitcoin actually does that. Once we had that model, then we asked the question, could proof of stake actually achieve that same level of security, or is there something that proof of work can do that proof of stake can So the first paper we published in the forest, that was 2016, and basically said, yes, the big box. You were conditioned to assumption of how it was going to be designed, which were practical for everybody. And then we wrote paper after paper after paper, gradually reaching things up and cleaning things up, and synchronous to semi synchronous model, getting rid of checkpoints, these types of things, that allowed us to gradually fill it in and make a QS system have the security properties of Bitcoin okay. and the same user experience as Bitcoin in terms of decentralization. I'm talking of the expansion of Cardano here in Latin America. How are you dealing with that? Uh, do you have any strategy or something for uh, augmenting your presence here in Latin America? Right. We have a stronger presence in South America than we do in Central America. And it's really a shame because we actually have some engineers and some people here in Mexico to predict that. Alejandro is one of our guys in Mexico outside of Mexico City, and we have other guys uh, good driver. who are engineers. <laughs> but we haven't really talked too much about the adoption. That's one of the reasons I came into the trip. I have this idea that instead of just planning out in the office how you should start a you should just go there and talk to people. When you talk to people, you learn from them when you see the environment. When we went to Mongolia, for example, we had no idea how many towns there were, what the community was like. And we found out that despite the fact that only 3 million people were in the country, there are already 5,000 people that are on the blockchain. Statistically, that's the huge for us. So we said, wow, this is a great vibrant community, but a lot of people are vibrant. It's the same situation in Mexico.
person you also release uh, the government food on a side chain uh, on Cardano. Uh, I, uh, I oh yeah, for uh, Cardano that. CL, we released Yella and uh, the KVM, and that was during the summertime. So yeah, KVM is a replication of the Ethereum platform. So if you're a Ethereum Ethereum developer, you write Solidity code, and you, and you want to deploy contracts on our system, you can take your Solidity code and it runs on our system just like what you see here. And there's already a decentralized application being developed? People the... have deployed apps just to test them, because it's a test app at the moment. Okay. And then uh, the other is Yella, which is our composite virtual machine, which is much better than the EVM. That was built by runtime verification out of the University of Illinois. Uh, so, we, well, we launched both of them, people basically in a way of testing applications. And what will happen is in late Q1 or Q2 of next year, we'll pull those things in and then they'll be able to deploy live applications. Yeah, he's like, I just got my ass. It's important to be like six times. Before you just launch it. Or else you won't be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And recently, uh, I heard that the president of Cardano Council, Cardano Council chairman, yeah, uh, the person, uh, Michael Parsons, I think his name, he, he quit his position. Uh, why did this happen? Yeah. So what happened was that Parsons was supposed to be a guy who comes and builds the board and then delegates authority to an executive director. When he joined, he joined with Bruce Milligan, with Peter Schmidt, uh, uh, John McGuire, and himself, and he actually had an executive director his name was Come in and do it. There were five people there, diversified the thoughts there. And then what happened was that he was acquired and pushed out the cars and didn't like to go there. And McGuire had health problems to resign. Bruce resigned from the council. And then it was just Guido and Parsons. And Guido got pushed out. So it was just basically Parsons. And then it was this guy. And at that point, he was a camp. He had limited power. And there was no checks and balances to diversify the board or execute. Everything just stalled up. We waited month after month after month for community investments to happen, for exchange listings to happen, and we just got so tired we started doing these things ourselves. And at some point the community started realizing that the foundation wasn't doing what it was paid to do, it wasn't representing the community. So this group of community members got together called the Guardians of Cardano, and they wrote this 14 page open letter. And at that point we just got public. Yeah, they, they said like there was some issues with the foundation resources. There was all these things. It was really problematic. And then a lot of pressure came in, and then Parsons realized that it was not a good idea to stay. So they resigned, and now the foundation is in the process of restoring and generating itself, and they'll get a later date of the proper board, and then they can get that to work. Which, by the way, would help expansion into Mexico, and expansion into Latin America, and to Asia, because all that money in the foundation was spent exactly for that. To set up community hubs and meetup groups and some modular projects and these types of things. Our job at IOHK is to write the software and do the science. We're not a community management company. We didn't hire people to do that. But we were forced to do that because the foundation wasn't. Now that it's been restored, we're going to tap into that control. It has a lot of money behind it. It should be able to actually restart that process. So you will say that Cardano is a centralized product? I wouldn't say centralized because there's are No, decentralized. Decentralized, yeah. Okay. And because it shows you how decentralized it is that when one of the entities fails, the other two entities are able to come together to restore that problem. If you're centralized, if you can't get rid of the situation, if one person is powerful, then you shut the whole thing down. Of course. Even if I was the guy, I would still go on. There's lots of really good people that can take their career on this. Okay. So I'd say we're very decentralized. Uh, and how does uh, IOHK uh, influence the, the decision making of the project? We had to divide and conquer strategy when we started. So if it involved funding of gaps or building projects on the system, Emergo takes care of it. There's a venture arm of the ecosystem. If it's about community building, exchange listings, it's about regulatory outreach, that's the foundation's job. And what science or engineering is IOHK. You have to start somewhere when you start something, and you can't really start with a small group of people. That was as decentralized as you can logically make it while still being able to execute and actually deliver on a reasonable roadmap. The next stage is to open up to each of these components and make them more decentralized. So we decentralize the community by giving funding to independent hubs that are really to simplify the venture side by creating a treasury system for the ashes and the other funding for the more than one company. And you decentralize the engineering side of the system to use the computer to take the process for the Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we're starting with the EIG and the EIG process for us. We call it the Cardano and And we're also creating a voting system to move Cardano to vote on CFD. And then we'll switch once that's done from IOHK deciding what the next major upload system is. 
to the community creating the system and voting the So there's this process of working with the and centralizing, and I've done it once before with Ethereum. I think we saw kind of how that evolved out, and how did a great job. And there's a good model of how to build an ecosystem. What we did is we took the model and we innovated it a bit. From the beginning, we decided not to put all power on one entity, the foundation. We split it very wisely. And how is Cardano dealing with the scalability? Scalability is a cheap layer. So first, we need to build the best replicated system we can build. And that's proof of that. But that's still like Bitcoin and that it's replicated. Everybody does the same level. Then what you do is you say, the people who are doing this work, let's go ahead and have them do different things. So the same and they have some sort of way to put all that together. And that's our research on parallel chain. And then we put all these things together, we're going to have another major version of our protocol called Core First Hydra. And at that point, the game of business is going to more people involved in the census. It's going to more people the faster the system gets. It's going to be interesting. And to do that in secure ways, it's a very complicated thing. So that's why it's important you have strong foundation. You have to mean, what is a blockchain? What are you trying to do? And can you achieve a reasonable security to use a replicated portion? And then, if you have two of these things in the parallel, could they both be secure? And then, can they communicate with each other? And then you put it all back together as if you had one thing. And once you have two, you have N. And once you have N, then you can run them all in parallel and get a lot of transaction processing. Right? But it, you have to do it very systematically. And you have to be very smart. So it's the base layer. Then you have scalability. Layer two or layer three. Like this is what came to the stage of the system. What's really nice about having a proof of stake system that tends towards stake people is that they can double down and become oracles and create channels and payment channels. And there's all kinds of ways you can federate that system. You can have a company very trustless, very fast, but at the same time, uh, it be very cheap to use. Really neat. You know, you can pay less than a penny for a transaction at a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Yeah, so that's what you're seeing out of spider or. And that's just a merger of good technology and layering. And we have some projects like we put money in the spider and putting money in all the hardware and these things to try to augment and make it better. So we're doing research at both levels. One, build the best base layer, and then uh, make sure you can shard that base layer, shard it in a reasonable, secure way, but then also have layer two protocols that can be layered on top of that so you can get even faster as we need to make feel feel it. Well, thank you, Charles. <laughs> say, say hi to the people of Twitter. Nice to meet you guys. Muy bien, gracias.